to Pakistan now, where the wait is finally over. The Sharifs and the Bhuttos have struck a deal. Pakistan will get a coalition government, and this alliance is not a solid on not on solid ground. A lot has changed in the last 24 hours. The original plan was to get Nawaz Sharif back in power and on the prime minister's chair. But that's not happening anymore. Nawaz Sharif will not be prime minister. Instead, he's nominating his brother, Shehbaz Sharif. Shehbaz Sharif is now the consensus candidate. He will get support from the Bhuttos, but only from the outside. And what's in it for the Bhuttos? The presidency. Asif Ali Zardari could become the next pri president of Pakistan. He'll have support from the Sharifs. It's a textbook case of quid pro quo. Shabaz Sharif gets votes from the Bhuttos to become prime minister. In exchange, the Sharifs support Asif Ali Zardari for the presidency. Both sides appeared before the press last night and they announced this alliance. Our Jamaats have been PMLN Inshallah, Pakistan will be able to और अल्लाह ने चाहा तो हर वो मुश्किल जो हमें पाकिस्तान में पेश आ रही है चाहे इकोनॉमिकल हो चाहे टेररिज्म हो या रिकंसिलिएशन रिकंसिलिएशन भी करनी है और रिकंसिलिएशन में पीटीआई भी शामिल है so the coalition is in place. It has six leaders. It has leaders rather from six parties, including independents from Imran Khan's party. Yes, some of them have already switched sides and joined Nawaz Sharif's camp. The Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz. That's the party. So how do the numbers stack up? For that, we'll have to wait for the vote in Pakistan's parliament. But the Sharifs are confident. They say they have the numbers. They're also forming a government in the Punjab province an old stronghold of the Sharifs. In Punjab, Maryam Nawaz will lead the government. She's the daughter of Nawaz Sharif. She'll become the chief minister. So the Sharifs will command significant political power in Pakistan. They're truly back in business, thanks to the military. But they had a last minute scare, courtesy Imran Khan. He's in jail, but he continues to challenge his opponents. His party tried to find coalition partners to cobble up a majority, it did not work. So for now, Imran Khan seems to have accepted the outcome. His party shared this, this post on social media, a picture from the press conference we just showed you featuring Shehbaz Sharif and Asif Ali Zardari. The caption says, Mandate Thieves. Today, Imran Khan appeared in court. He got a chance to speak to some reporters. This was his first in-person statement since the election. And what did he say? That the mandate has been stolen and the votes were tampered with. For all his popularity, Imran Khan won't be able to stop the Sharifs. Not for now. His immediate challenge is to keep his flock together. Earlier today, he suffered another setback. Imran Khan's party lost a coalition partner, the Jamaat-e Islami. Until yesterday, they were on board, ready to support Imran Khan's candidates in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa to form a coalition government there. But today, they backtracked. At the same time, they've also questioned the election result. They too believe the poll was rigged. मैं समझता हूं कि यह पूरा जो जमुरियत है उसके ऊपर हमला है और यह डाका है अवामी राय के ऊपर और यह हमारे आईन और कानून की खिलाफ वर्जी है और जो लोग भी इसके मुर्तकिब हैं उन्होंने पाकिस्तान के साथ अच्छा नहीं किया जमुरियत के साथ अच्छा नहीं किया इट्स क्लियर दैट द आर्मी ट्राइड टू फिक्स दिस इलेक्शन एंड बॉचड इट अप नाउ देयर इंस्टॉलिंग एन अनस्टेबल गवर्नमेंट it may have the majority on the floor of the house, but it doesn't have popular support. And their nemesis, Imran Khan, may be behind bars, but he can still mobilize the masses. That is the biggest challenge for the Pakistani military. They've stifled Imran Khan, but they failed to silence him. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issue, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.